It's Mo. It is the middle of March and I literally I just finished filming another triad chapter and doing the wrap-up for that one and again I want to start a triad chapter. So I have four historical fictions here. I think they're all historical fictions. They might have a touch of magical realism in them but I have been trying to assess my TBR. March is TBR month for me so I go through my TBR. I try to look and see what books I definitely want to keep, what books I want to get rid of. I try to organize I try to reshelf, but one of the ways that I like to unhaul books, hopefully, or determine if I want to keep books on my TBR is by doing triad chapters. So these books I've had on my TBR for a while, and the first one is Malmuth by Sarah Perry. She is the author of The Essence Essex Serpents, which is on my 21 books I found out about in 2021 that I wanted to read in 2022 list. I have not made a lot of progress on the progress on that list and I have not found the Essex Serpent. But when I found Malmuth for $1 at my local used bookstore, I decided to pick this one up. This one is not nearly as well renowned as the Essex Serpent, but it did sound interesting. Now I cannot remember at all what it is about. I'm not going to read the back. I'm just going to go ahead and read the first chapter. I do think that like the Essex Serpent this has a little bit of magical realism in it or fabulism in it. I want to give it a try but because I've never read any Sarah Perry and because this one is not her most well-received book I'm not sure if it's really going to be for me. I also don't love historical fiction so all of these are like you know a wild card. Next we have People of the Book by Geraldine Brooks. Geraldine Brooks is a very well loved, well received author, especially on booktube, especially the people that I follow. I know that Matthew Sharapa loves Geraldine Brooks and she's written a lot of different types of books as far as I can tell. She has like a Little Women retelling slash reimagining slash continuation and this book again I don't really know anything about all of these books I don't really know that much about. This one is about a bookseller I think and he finds finds a very special book and so that really really intrigued me. Again I don't know if Geraldine Brooks is going to be the author for me. I don't know if I'm really going to enjoy her style of historical fiction but I want to read the first chapter and find out. This has a really beautiful front cover page too. It says Sarajevo spring 1996 so I didn't even know that this took place in Sarajevo so that makes me a little bit more excited about it even. Next we have Once Upon a River by Diane Centerfield. So this book I actually picked up because I couldn't remember if it was this book or The Essex Serpent that I wanted to read and that was on my 21 books I found out about in 2021 and I wanted to read in 2022 list. So I just picked it up. A young girl is pulled from a river near a pub and again I think this one has some like magical realism in it. And finally we have The Island of Sea Women by Lisa C. This book I've wanted to read since starting booktube. I heard somebody talk about it and it sounded really interesting. This book is about pearl divers in Korea and it is like an intergenerational tale or a over the decades tale talking about the occupation of Korea and about these women's lives. So I believe this will have two or more storylines. Day one, 2008, and then 1938. It seems to be split between those two years, 2008 and 1938, and it does seem to go back and forth, but it seems like there's quite a few chapters in each section. So so that would probably help with my dislike of alternate timelines. I don't like two timelines most generally, but I really hate when timelines go one chapter, one chapter, one chapter, one chapter. So I think that that would help because you get like a better, bigger chunk of what's going on in each timeline by having multiple chapters set in that time. Anti-buzzwords for me, historical fiction, multiple timelines, multi-generational tales, but it does sound really interesting. So I I have actually tried to read this one very very briefly on audio and I couldn't get into it but I was on vacation at the time and so it could have been a me thing not a book thing so I will be trying a chapter of this one and giving it another try. Those are the four books that we're going to try a chapter of today. When I have read a few pages or a chapter or a prologue of each of these books I will come back to you and let you know which books I am intrigued by, which books I'm going to continue reading, which books I might un- 
haul. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I have here. Let me know what you thought of them and we'll come back to you in just a moment and I'll let you know what I think of them. Okay, I am back and I have read part of the beginning of all these books. So I have not been doing very good on my triad chapters and I have not been keeping up with them as well as I should. I actually started these and this triad, these books and this triad chapter way earlier than now and I just never had the opportunity to finish or had the opportunity to come back. It's hard for me to read four chapters right in a row so I'll usually read two chapters and then come back and then read two more chapters. Something that I did this time which was totally different was I checked to see if any of these books were on audiobook apps so like Libby and Hoopla and I tried reading a little bit of them via the audiobook if they were. The first book that I read a little bit of and that I read a little bit of on audio was Once Upon a River by Diane Settenfield. This book is about a young woman who is found drowned or mostly drowned in a river in England. It's right near a pub so the people at the pub kind of pull her out. It goes from there. I read a little bit of this on audio, a little bit physically, and I just found the writing to be very whimsical, very fairy tale esque very theatrical, and I really couldn't get into it, and I really wasn't sure how I felt about it. It sounded like it's going to be a little bit mystery, a little bit small town intrigue, a little bit fabulism. After reading the first few pages and listening to it a little bit, like it's trying really hard to be what it is, and it is that, and if you like that, like if you like the Outlander books or you know some of those women written women led very fairy tale esque but also a little bit fantasy and historical fiction that's the other key part of this that it's historical fiction then you might really really enjoy this I did not really really enjoy it and I found myself just wanting to not pick it up so I'm gonna unhaul this one it's also quite long I think it's really beautiful I do love this cover it's not one that I'm forever and ever going to give up on because maybe I'll hear more about it one day or maybe I'll pick it up again one day but like I don't need it in my collection. I've seen this book often enough and I know that I could get it used if I needed to so this one is getting unhauled. The next book that I read a little bit of on audio was The Island of Sea Women by Lisa C. Lisa C is a mostly American with Korean heritage author and this book is all about Korean it takes place in two different timelines in Korea. The first timeline takes place in the present day of the book, 2008. The book was actually written in 2019. And then it goes back to 1938. And this has a little chapter of 2008 and then several chapters of 1938 and then a chapter of 2008. So that's going to be like much more my speed. And it opens in 2008 with an older woman and she's on a beach collecting seaweed and her family is looking for her and it talks a little bit about her life and then we kind of go back to 1938 where she is a young woman and it talks about her life and it's all about Korea and the Korean occupation and the pearl diving and sea divers in Korea. I didn't read a lot of it but I did enjoy a small portion of the audiobook that I did listen to. I definitely will be keeping this one. I, do, I like this cover too. The next book that I read a little bit of is Melmoth and this is by Sarah Pe Perry. This book is all about a manuscript. So I only read a very small amount of this and the first part of it is a letter. It's a letter saying like I'm so sorry I had to give you this manuscript. I'm so sorry I had to put this problem in your hands. She's going to be your problem now and I had to do it. I regret doing it but I had to do it. And so then we go on to the actual story part one. It is set in Prague and we start to meet like our characters and find out what Malmuth is and what was transferred or passed on by passing on this manuscript. So that letter alone really hooked me in and re really made me interested in the book. The writing style is a little whimsical. It is a little fairy tale esque but not that much. I thought the idea of these myths and legends from Prague and Germany was interesting and it's definitely one that I want to read a little 
little bit more of and discover more of, so I will be keeping this one. The last book that I read a little bit of for this try chapter is People of the Book by Geraldine Brooks. I thought it was interesting that I recently read Bitter by Aquake Meze, and there's quite a few Geraldine Brooks quotes in that, which made me more intrigued. It was, a I read that after I read the beginning of this, and it does have like a super cool map in it, very beautiful. And it is set in Sarajevo, which I've never read a book set in Sarajevo, so I was super excited about that. And it is also about a book. It also has fabulism or magical realism, and it also revolves around like a book, a manuscript. So we start off in part one with our main character, and she is waiting for a book to be given to her. She is a restorer. So she's set out all her tools and she's getting everything ready. And she's talking about how she prefers to work in her own studio, but she was willing to travel for this book. And we're meeting various other people as she's waiting and wondering why this book hasn't appeared. But the way that this was written was just like, I don't know, really off-putting to me. Like I just really didn't enjoy it. This book is also quite ripped up. And I, from it, like a vibe that I wasn't going to enjoy it. Obviously, these try chapters are hit or miss. Like, you never know. I'm only reading a little bit. I mean, I'm not even reading a full chapter most of the time. I'm really just going on, like, the initial thoughts and my vibes, which sometimes I are totally correct and sometimes are wrong. But as it stands now, although people of the book, the larger storyline sounds really intriguing to me, I am going to be unhauling this one. So I think a productive try chapter, I'm going to be keeping two books, two books that I may eventually unhaul as well, because these might not work for me. They're both historical fictions, which is not my thing, but they were both intriguing enough and had enough to go on that I want to try reading them more thoroughly. And then there were two historical fictions that were not my vibe, I really wasn't jiving with, and and I will be passing on. So I'm happy to have tried all these chapters, even though this try chapter was a little all over the place for me. Hopefully it didn't seem so far out of place for you. And the last thing that I wanted to do in this try chapter was just talk about my other try chapter books. I had wanted to do a bunch of try chapters for the month of March because that is my TBR month, but now we are nearing the end of March and I'm not going to get to them. So here are some other try chapter books that I have on my piles. If if you have any desire to see a try chapter with any of these books, let me know. I've grouped them loosely into like where I think I would read them, but they could get scrambled up. The first grouping is like young adult. I have The Face on the Milk Carton by Carolyn B. Clooney. I only have this one because it's a New Jersey book. Next, I have 100 Cupboards, book one. This one just seemed like a really interesting middle grade that I had in my basement box books. And also a study in Charlotte. I got this early on in my booktube career because I'd heard about it. It is a Sherlock Holmes retelling and I really love Sherlock Holmes, but I pretty quickly figured out that I don't really read middle grade or young adult, so I want to try a chapter of it though and see what happens. Next grouping doesn't really have a full category. I have Bright Lines by Tanwi Nadini Islam, and this is, I think, like a women's fiction. I don't think it's a historical fiction, but it is set in Brooklyn, which made me interested in it. One of the characters in it is from Bangladesh, so that sounded really interesting, but like the cover and the synopsis kind of makes me think it's going to be more of like a women's fiction. It's not going to be for me. In the same grouping, I have My Monticello by Jocelyn Nicole Johnson. This is actually a short story collection, but I think they're interconnected short stories all about the descendants of slaves from Monticello. The last in this grouping is The Danish Girl by David Eberhoff. This book is inspired by a true story of a painter in, in Denmark who was transgender, but it is not written by a transgender person. It's written by a cis person, and I've heard mixed reviews on interpretation of the story by this author. I don't know the original story, and I've never seen the movie, but I am interested in it, but I just, because that I heard the rep isn't great, I'm not sure on that one. Next I have two books. One is The Club by Takis Verger. I've wanted to read this one for a long time. I've mentioned it in other try chapters. I randomly got it. I don't know what it's about, but I don't know. It's super appealing to me for some reason. Like, I don't know if it's dark academia or what. And then another book from my basement box books is City of Bohan by Kevin Barry. I've heard of Kevin Barry. This one also has a map. And this, I believe, is a Irish author, and it is like a Irish sci-fi or like steampunk 
monkey type story. I am interested enough to try a chapter of it. And the final grouping is Sherlock Holmes. We have Sherlock Holmes and the case of Sabina Hall. This is by L.B. Greenwood and a lot of the Sherlock Holmes retellings that I've seen are by L.B. Greenwood. So I thought I would try this one. It's a cute hardcover edition and the name was appealing to me. I also have The Italian Secretary by Caleb Carr. Caleb Carr is really well known for The Alchemist which was like a super long, not The Alchemist, what was it called? Caleb Carr is super well known for The Alienist which is like a super long historical fiction but this is a Sherlock Holmes retelling. And then finally in this category is The Confessions of Mycroft Holmes, A Paper Chase by Marcel Thoreau. I don't really know anything about this. I think it's more about Mycroft Holmes than it is about Sherlock Holmes but I do find that interesting. Sadly I did DNF a Mycroft Holmes story earlier this year so I don't know if I'm really gonna like it. We'll just have to find out. Those are other books that I am going to try a chapter of eventually. Let me know if there's any of those books that you would really really like to see me try a chapter of so I know which ones I can do next and let me know what your main goal for trying a chapter is. Is it to get rid of books? That has been my main goal recently or is it to find your next read or is it to re-familiarize yourself with books that you have? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!